sorry, I'm back. Those are the same directions as radial plus, radial minus. Radial plus means given that I'm traveling around our circular orbit in this direction, my velocity vector is this direction, it is the 90 degree angle such that it's pointing towards the center of the circle, which also happens to be pointing directly towards the center of Kerbin. And radial minus points directly outwards. Now you might imagine if I was in a really elliptical orbit, which I'll show you later, that wouldn't necessarily be true. Um, normal plus and normal minus are the other two perpendicular angles. Normal plus points up, so if you look from behind the spacecraft in the direction it's traveling in the orbit, normal plus is the one that will push the orbit upwards from the direction in which you are traveling and normal minus is the one that would push it downwards so normal if i if i push in the normal plus direction that will tilt this orbit in this direction if i if i'm pushing in the normal minus direction it will tilt the orbit that way so we're going to use those later almost certainly and i'll show you why but for now you can see we're coming around the earth or kerbin here kerbal um and uh and the moon's over there so I'm going to show you that little trick I said, so you don't have to use Protractor. If you want to land on the moon for the first time, all you do is you fly around the planet until you get moonrise. Let's make sure we're pushing in the prograde direction roughly, because we're going to want to burn in that direction when we see moonrise. You don't have to be very exact either. Um, the orbital transfer into the moon's sphere of influence is pretty damn forgiving um, because you're not going a long way and it is a pretty massive body relatively speaking there it is there's moonrise and that was a little late but it'll be good enough so we're gonna get so our nav ball is pointing in this direction over here and then we're going to ignite our engines and we're going to thrust our way um, so that we've got an intersection orbit. Now, because these things are gimbaled, by the way, sometimes it's good to ignite early because it gets your spacecraft where you want it to go faster. Um, so, we now have a roughly 30 second burn. You can see my thrust to rage ratio is almost up to one for this stage at this point. Um, so I'm gonna shut up and this burn will go. And we'll see where we get. All right, I'm back. So you can see the burn's almost complete. Orbit's pushing out towards the moon. If you haven't done this before, if you wonder how to rendezvous with the moon. Um, so I showed you when to burn. The next thing to do is watch for this influ watch when we enter the moon sphere of influence. So you might want to throttle back like I did so you can do it carefully. And I kind of want to show you how to do this. Um, and because I burned a little late, it happened a little later than it should have. So there you go. I'm going to reach I'm going to intersect the moon, and right now I'm in a hyperbolic, I will achieve a hyperbolic trajectory um, passing the moon, and right now that trajectory is pretty damn intense. It's going to take me 1,000 meters from the surface of the moon. We're going to correct for that, because um, we really don't want to be that close. In fact, we might as well correct for it now. So we're going to spin the spacecraft around. Or actually, let me show you RCS. So I can turn on my RCS thrusters. And I'm going to push the spacecraft away. There it is. And I'm going to push it. I'm going to, I'm basically slowing down the spacecraft a little bit so that the periapsis of the moon intersect happens um, not at a thousand meters, but more at a hundred kilometers. And that's probably. Let's call cool that. All right. The other thing to notice is I did a pretty good job with my inclination this time. So I'm basically going to um, orbit the moon at the equator, which is where I want, which is what I want to do because my moon base is almost at the equator. But I'm going to show you how to correct for this. This could be worse. This could be up here because if I intersect the moon, say, below its orbit, my ejection hyperbola will have me exiting above um, the plane of the elliptic. We don't want that to necessarily occur depending on what we're trying to do. On the other hand, if we were trying to achieve a polar orbit around the moon, that would be a good way of doing it. So let me show you how to correct for that. When I'm about halfway to the moon, I'm gonna do a correction burn. All right, so we're gonna speed, we're gonna speed shit up until we get about halfway there. And there we go. 
that's close enough to half, don't you think? It doesn't really matter exactly. The point is to get it roughly the same. And now remember I told you about these various things. Well, now we're in a very elliptical orbit, right? This would be our orbit if the moon wasn't there. So remember I said blue dot, this position on the nav ball is basically pointing directly away from the planet that I'm orbiting. Um, and, and the brown dot on the other side is pointing directly at the planet I'm orbiting. But, but radial plus and radial minus aren't respect to the planet, they're respect to the orbit. So right now radial plus is in this direction and radial minus is in this direction. Normal plus is if I can get in the plane, this direction. Normal minus is in this direction. Because right now I'm ejecting upwards a little bit, I want to point in the normal minus direction. Which, as I said before, if they gave me a direction on the nav ball, I would be less inclined to use this. Although it is still damn convenient to tell the computer which direction you want to point, and the computer rotates your spacecraft into that direction. Uh, is that cheating? Sure it is. So is your cruise control on your car. What's that? Your two port I have for cruise control? Well, get a life. All right. Here we are. Normal minus. Pretty close to the correct angle. So watch what happens. I'm going to actually overcompensate and then have to push back the other direction. But if I thrust in that direction, oh crap, I lied. I'm actually going in the normal, I want to go in the normal plus. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm pushing my orbit down. And I missed the planet entirely at that point. Um, and my ejection velocity is up. So we want to flip that around. Which, I'm going to turn on my RCS thrusters make myself go around a little faster. And you can see my plane of my my plane of my orbit is below the plane of the orbit of the moon. So I want to push that back up and get a nice flat trajectory so I'm near the equator. All right, there we go. Oops, I overshot. That's what I get for turning off the RCS thrusters too early. Good enough for government work. Thrusting up a little bit. I'm going to bring this down until it's roughly flat. Periapsis is still good. All right, there we go. All right, so sometimes you need to do orbital maneuvers. That's how you do them. It's best to do them before you get near the planet or the moon because you have to use a lot more fuel there than you do out here. You can see I barely had to thrust at all to make big changes. Um, so now we're going to speed up again, and we'll be at the moon. All right, there we go. Now I want to thrust, I want to slow my velocity vector down to bring this hyperbolic trajectory into an orbital trajectory. And I'm going to do it right here at periapsis. And you can see I'm at 90k. So I need to point in the retrograde direction. So again, I'm going to have ASAS do that. Um, or I could I could rotate it myself. I basically want the nose of my spacecraft to be centered with that X. That tells me that the noise is pointing exactly opposite the direction of my velocity vector. And I don't have to watch the map view because I have this wonderful thing called MechDerp here, which is showing all my orbital information. There's my periapsis. That's where I am right now. I'm actually a little above my periapsis. Um, my apoapsis is at 700k, 600, 500, 400. When it gets to about 100, I'm going to stop thrusting. I don't really care if this is circular because I'm immediately going to go into a descent. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. That's close enough. It's not even close to circular, but like I said, I don't really care because my moon base is right over here. So the next thing I need to do is get, you can see my moon base is located slightly north of zero. In fact, if I show you this, it's two degrees north. So I'm going to miss it by a couple hundred kilometers if I land here, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to thrust normal plus, but I'm going to do it when my spacecraft reaches about 90 degrees in its orbit off